Hi, folks. We'll start in about five or six minutes, give uh, other people a chance to join. Until then, uh, unmute your mic. Sorry, mute your mic so there isn't any interference. And if you guys can put up your thumbs to say that you can have, hear me loud and clear. Okay, excellent. So thank you very much. So at the beginning, I uh, said to all of you that uh, anybody here that's just here for no reason other than to sit here and do nothing about what's going on in life, please just log out and leave. And I know these things are negative and it doesn't set the right standard, but I'm not going to be shy about these things. So anybody here that have no intention of doing anything or you know, helping the Canadians raise money or give them documents, share the knowledge that I'm going to share with you, uh, just please simply leave because I, I really do not want you here. And I want to make that very clear. For those people here that uh, have any questions, think about it. So I'm going to ask you guys to self-supervise yourself. I'm offering something that's very rarely ever is ever being done, if not never has been done in the known history. So if you guys can treat it with the respect that it, it is delivered to you, that'd be really good. So supervise yourselves to keep yourselves quiet, okay? Because nobody can look after yourselves better than you can yourselves, full stop. So I can, so I'm not busy unmuting, muting people and telling people to be quiet. And so please don't use this meeting as a test ground, you know, having a conversation with your wife and dog and things like that, which is what is happening now, because if it continues, I'm just going to switch this off and leave. Okay, so you guys make sure that you supervise each other and keep yourself and keep yourselves. So if people continue speaking, I'm just going to remove you from this conversation. All right, everybody should be paying full attention. And, I, and I, it's not my intention to be somber with people, but you're giving going to be taught things that, that has been hidden from you for well over 160 years. And I'm going to reveal how these things work. Okay. So out of kindness to yourselves and what's happening, mute your mics. Don't use this as a conversation ground. All right, and listen and learn. Okay. You guys are okay with that? Put your thumbs up, please. All right. Thank you very much. So for the third and last time, those people that are here only to serve themselves are just simply leave because I don't want anything to do with you, okay? Full stop. For those people that want to do things for, uh, for the world that we live in, take it forward, what the Canadians have taught us as it were around the world, uh, then I'm happy to take your questions and teach you the things that you need to know. Uh, full stop. So, first thing, uh, you need to know, I only teach first-hand knowledge and I only do first-hand knowledge, which means if I haven't done it, I don't teach it. For those people that don't know who I am, I'm the Chief Federal Postal Court Judge, as well as a Planet Potentiary Judge. What that means is that those things that come through the letterbox, I control it. And as a Planet Potentiary Judge, my job is to educate the people in those things that they need to know to do the things that they need to do, okay? Which means I will show discretion as to what I reveal, just in case people think that they can, you know, uh, take out information from me that they are not ready for. Most, of, most people on this planet are not ready for anything, but the Canadians have said, enough is enough. That's usually a signal that people are going to do something about it, okay? Full stop. Now, I also want to make it very clear, you guys, uh, we are happy to do with this recording anything that you want with it. You can use it, you can upload it on YouTube, etc. I'm perfectly okay with that, all right? 
the intention is to share it with the Canadians because the, my message only gets through to perhaps uh, a few thousand people in Canada. Other than that, it's all filtered out by what is known as shadow banning. Okay then, full stop. So first thing is first. For those people that have watched my presentations in the last 10 days, they're full of information on how the county coroner works and the mechanisms or bureaucracies that they use to, to put you and keep you in the land of the unknown, albeit in the land of the dead. And that is done through the media, language, religion, um, and thousands of other things, including food supply, uh, vaccines, and so on and so forth. With the uh, New Zealand people, who, whom I, who I'm also training, their mandates are a little bit more severe in so far as that they, the governments are basically saying, we're going to smash your door down and force inject you, whether you like it or not. Okay, so when it comes to that sort of stuff, you know that every single country on this planet that is doing what they're doing is essentially saying that we are Nazis, we never went away, and we're not going to go away until you stop us. That's what they're saying to you. Have no mistake about that. Okay. The other element you need to know is that as we speak, the the the, the U.S. How can I put it? Uh, the U.S. dollar, which which you probably know is not the U.S. dollar. It's just a dollar that that note will soon start to lose incredible amount of value. And this is part of the monetary system that they had in, set in place to capture every single one of you as a slave. So let me quickly explain. I give, say, Phil here, a uh, hundred pounds for a day's work. Okay, I'm the banker. I get to print another hundred dollars. And I print that hundred dollars without any proof of work. I just simply create it out of digits. And then I pay uh, Michael here with it, another hundred dollars. When I have done that, I have essentially devalued Phil's one day of work with me by 50%. So I essentially only paid him $50. And the reason why that is, is because I've printed off another hundred dollars devaluing his currency by half. So what he was hoping to pay his rent with for $50 is now all going to be paid as $50 because his rent has gone up with inflation. Everybody understands this monetary mechanism that you are in. Okay, so the US dollar has already lost a considerable amount of its purchasing value. This is not to say your value has not gone down, but the medium of exchange has devalued the sweat equity of what you are, full stop. In addition to this, uh, Prince Charles, who's part of the principalities, uh, principality is a legal fiction. There are a vulgar race of subspecies that parasite on your planet. They will be coming to Ireland to remove thousands of houses, businesses, bank accounts, and so on and so forth. That's going to happen at the end of the month, unless you do the things that you need to, which I will teach you. Okay, full stop. On June, I think it's 6 June or mid June, the Queen Elizabeth II, which is also part of the Principality, a legal fiction, will be celebrating its uh, Platinum Jubilee. The word Jubilee is a Jewish word, which means forgiveness of debt. She owes the people who are the creditors everything because it has nothing of its own. The crown, it has nothing of its own. And if she successfully gets people to believe the people are the debtors and she's the creditor, you've got serious problems. Okay, the last time that happened was like on a 50th Jubilee. And of course, famously in the 1970s, with the Sex Pistols forgiving her debts by, by everybody singing, God save the Queen and the fascist regime. That's called a verbal contract. And that's how the mechanisms that they use, they reverse everything. 
So she, she becomes the sinner. She's the sinner in religious terms, but she gets you to forgive her sins. Who has she sinned against? The people. Get, get By getting you to believe and saying that you forgive her sins, you've made contract with her. Everybody understands this, okay? That's another element of it. So I am, I've, put, I've put these things together to be able to put a wedge in from the crown, being able to reassert its, reassert its fraud upon the population, albeit in the Commonwealth. Okay, even though the Commonwealth doesn't technically exist anymore because of David Wayne Miller, they work and move in presumption and assumption. All legal fictions work under presumption and assumption. You know this as being, you are guilty until you prove yourself innocent. For factual men and women, you are innocent until the accuser proves, proves you to be guilty. The burden of proof is on the claimant. In the world of fiction, it's the other way around. It's called the Spanish Inquisition. These mechanisms are what your governments and courts are running and have been doing for over 160 years to my records, to my account, full stop. The period that you are in at the moment is called the corona period. Corona is another word to say that you have been birthed, as in when a baby is being born, you can see it's corona, that it's head. And you can see the life force, your subconscious mind can see it. That corona is your life force that they're after. The word corona also means corona. Corona also means coronation. Coronation in English, corona, corona, all mean the one same thing. Crown means corona, and they're after your corona. But because most human beings are just simply operating on a conscious level, unable to see and hear more than what their conscious mind is able to do, they are extremely disabled. And the mechanism of the disability is very easy. Is that if you believe a lie, and that's the lie that you live out. If you believe that there is a God, and these are the things that you need to uh, do to keep your God from uh, pleasing itself so it doesn't punish you, that's the lie, and that's the life that you live. So if you believe that the dollar is the almighty dollar, as it were, and that it has a limited supply, and that it purchases bread and lands and so on and so forth, you've just lived a lie. And that is what human beings have been doing for nearly 150 year, 150, 160 years to my account. And that's how the illusion works. So I'll explain a little bit more, okay? There's a man there that's being accused of being Jesus, all right? So if I get everybody to believe by testimony after testimony that he is Jesus reincarnated, you people have just followed a lie. You understand that. And everything else you do thereafter is perpetrated on that lie. One lie begets another lie. Until someone like me comes along and says, hey, what does Jesus mean? Yeah, and you might think about it and say, well, let's explore that. What does that Jesus mean? Oh, it's the same word as Jehovah. Oh, what does Jehovah mean? Oh, it's the same word as a prefix and a root word, which essentially means mischief maker, I mischief maker, okay? And the point that I'm making is that if you think you cannot be disillusioned, if you think that you cannot be lied to, look at the history of your world, okay? Look how many Muslims, Catholics, Hindus there are on this planet. People do not know what they are talking about. They do not know what anything or how anything on this planet works. They know nothing about nothing. And the level of how high and profound that is, is just all breathtaking. We call it the world of fiction. In the monetary system, they call it fictional money. It's a legal fiction, full stop. 
The vaccine mandate essentially is a vaccine so they can vaccinate you of your crown. You understand this? What chemical do I need to insert into you? And please do not think they are all the same. They are not. They are designed specifically to you. Okay, the patents of which belongs to Microsoft and a few other companies. Please do not think Microsoft is Bill Gates. I have no idea who Bill Gates is, but I do know the workings of Microsoft, okay? Because Bill Gates is an actor, that's all, full stop. So if I successfully get the population to vaccinate themselves against the corona, which is listed in the medical dictionary as a common cold, I have successfully converted everybody to believe that their corona is a virus and therefore you need to be vaccinated out of it. You, have, you guys understand this? Okay. The Church of England is run by a legal fiction called uh, Elizabeth II, who is also the head of the Commonwealth. The Church of England is another word for the treasury. Every Church of England has one in every county, and they have no crosses on top of it, because that's always been the treasury. She means to go into that treasury and remove your wealth and transfer it into the city of London under the mayoral ceremony, where the city of London mayor will invite her as the mayor to come into the city of London, where she will transfer as a transmitting utility, look up these words, as a util transmitting utility with the entire energy of the Commonwealth, because they have been, they have proven that you got yourself vaccinated out of the corona, and therefore she is now the trustee of that, and she's going to hand that trustee position to the people in central London, albeit the inner temple bar, full stop. As a plenipotentiary judge, I'm going to teach you guys how to stop this mechanism from taking place. Okay. I'm going to uh, pull up a document. Does anybody know how I can do a screen share? Even though I know these systems, I'm not very good uh, IT savvy. Mark, at the bottom, it should say screen share. At the bottom of your screen, a little green box you can click on. Yeah, it's a particular document I'm trying to show you. And uh, I don't know how to make it come up. So, so screen share again. Ah, oh, there it is. It's come up now. Okay. So thumbs up if you guys can see it. Originally, I designed this for the Americans. Uh, everything on here is my details, as it were, because I hide nothing, and I always teach first-hand knowledge. Uh, full stop. So everybody can see this. Now, is everybody aware that the, cor the coroner, the coroner is the one that is actually administering your affairs by saying whether you are dead or alive, uh, what is known as brain dead. You guys, are you guys aware of this? If not, uh, just, you know, shake your head or say something like this. Okay, so that is that. The highest court on this planet in every country in the world is the county coroner's court. The county coroner's court. The county coroner's court administers 
the county courts, as well as the sheriff's office, and as well as the police stations, and so on and so forth. The Supreme Court and all other courts are what's known as punies. Puny is a French word, P-U-N-Y. It means below man, and they are servants to serve man. But like because of the mirroring and because they effectively got people to believe that they are greater than you, you know, stronger than you, and you have to do what you need, you, you have to do what they tell you, they successfully got people to believe they are not punies and that you are the puny. All right. And there is a, a lot of tests that they have to go through to prove that you are actually brain dead. I know it is very difficult for me to look at you guys that are living souls here, you know, moving your eyelids and yawning, even some of you guys are yawning. <laughs> you know? It's hard to believe that uh, you are dead. But they have so much phenomenal evidence that you are actually zombies, what they call the living dead, that it's they got no choice but to tick you off as brain dead. One of the tests is that do you respond to logic? Do you, do you understand what an oxymoron is? Do you respond to stimuli? Okay. Do you have a death pledge in place? Did you really think the Federal Reserve Bank, which is private, is controlled by laws? Did you really think 20 years ago that, uh, the, that the Muslims were the enemies and they're the ones that perpetrated 9-11? Did you believe that? If you did, they all have proof that you have you are zombies because you believed a lie. When you believe a lie and act on that lie, that is all proof that you are walking dead. Did you really believe from the 1960s all the way up to the 1990s that the Irish were terrorists? Well, the answer is they did. Yeah, Virtually every country in the world, including the Irish, believe that they are a terrorist nation and they well, the IRA was fighting for them. The IRA was nothing more than a crown agent sent in to make sure that the Irish do not come together and fight what is known as the British. British are not English, and they are not United Kingdom. These are three different jurisdictions. So when they have proven, the county coroner, that people don't even understand what a corona is, and that you can get vaccinated from it and that you have mortgages and that you live, that you take an oath to something that doesn't really exist. Like for example, the uh, Corporation of Ireland or the Corporation of the United States, but they always leave out America because that's a different jurisdiction. So there are actually hundreds of the tests that they perform to prove that you are actually dead on paper. You see, one of the responses of uh, men and women, not human, is that are you responsive to logic and rationality? And because of this, you are dead on paper as well, which means you are deliberately stopped from making contract with each other or anybody else or making any claims on a essential service provider like your government. Your government exists subservient to you, but through years of manipulation or decades, they have successfully got you to believe you are their servants. And the end result of that is the point that you guys are in, full stop. I am happy to take a few questions at this stage. Please do not rush in or please do not compete with each other. If you do not compete, you will find this questioning and answering will go very smoothly. It's called the collective consciousness, okay? So anybody that has a question to ask, just simply unmute your mic and ask that question. Think about your question though, okay? Think about your question. Do not question me about things I have not spoken about yet because I will teach you those things later on, okay? Yes, hi, I have a question about Switzerland, because in Switzerland, the people are supposed to be sovereign. But with everything that is happening, it doesn't really look like that. So how does this work here? 
at the moment you have not asked me a question darling i i know that you know i need to be direct with you because most people ask questions ask make statements without a they don't even ask a question they don't even know what a question is so try to formulate what you've just said as a question and not a statement okay um are the people of switzerland really sovereign no they are not okay for several reasons do you know what sovereign means yes or no yes what does it mean that you can decide about your own uh, body and mind and uh... okay so that is the sovereign of a legal fiction that's okay. the definition of a sovereign of a legal fiction the sovereign in lawful the distinction of men and women is that and you can look it up yourself because i'm doing it for you is another word for a super anus <laughs> yeah just look it up it's on wikipedia i've done videos on it it means you are a super asshole okay and sorry about my strong language ladies and gentlemen but this is you've now entered the world of legal fiction okay so you can claim sovereignty that's fine but you need to know what it means and that you need to know it's a prince it's part of a language of created by the principalities okay that's that now you know and i know you can make decisions in your country but your country's constitution is the same constitution as a bank so you are essentially a nation of bank employees will this system what i'm teaching you work in switzerland it will work in any country where there's the post office and the universal postal union is in switzerland bern bern switzerland okay that's the headquarters of the post office full stop so the answer direct answer is yes it will work in any country in the world all right okay thank you okay any other question i have a question in order to go to the coroner's office do you need to have your live life claim or can you go without having that i'll ask that question towards the end okay and i'll take another question can i ask a question i'll take another question so you know yeah could i ask a question please I'll take any question so ask the question please. Okay. The queen is the trustee of the vaccinated people is this right? Yes, that's correct. Yeah. And we the people here on this Zoom call are looking to get out of debt from the crown. Ask me the so, question please rather make sense. Is people who are vaccinated not able to get out from the mortgages and the debt from the crown or are they able to do what we're doing i'm not talking about mortgages i'm not talking about debts i'm talking about the vaccine mandate i'm yeah. talking about i'm talking about correcting your status with the coroner's office oh for you God. to be able to do what you're doing okay so okay. these questions you might need to ask towards the end because i have not okay. even gone onto the document okay thank you all right somebody else uh raise their um, hand mark yeah can you hear me hi yeah. oh, i wanted to know the difference between the coroner's office and vital statistics are they the same they are actually essentially the same the vital statistics is the united states uh listing you whether you are dead or alive within okay. the district within the district of columbia okay because i've gone Who, down there before before i so, got darling, you information. Darling, darling. Yes, sorry we're not, we're not going to get into that okay i'm, I'm going to teach you the mechanism but okay it is, it is the mechanism it is the county coroner you will need to speak to all right okay I yes have, i have i have not finished my talk so you guys need to listen and ask questions about what i have just said as to opposed to anything else all right okay. for exploration reason you might be jumping the gun and that will just confuse people i'm happy to take one more question before i go on to the next um 
in, in the Netherlands, we don't have a uh, coroner. We have a, a, a forensic pathologist. Is that uh, the same person you are referring to? I do not know. I do not know. But if you send me the detail through email, saying that I asked for it, I can email you back. Probably, you know, take me seven days or so because I'm behind the emails. My staff is overworked and I can give you that answer. Okay. I take it that's a night. Yes. Okay. Let's go to the document itself. Remember, you will have a recording of this. All right. And I'm going to be speaking in a steady, slow voice. And I will punctuate, if not emphasize, the words that you need to know. And I'll go through this document uh, in relative amount of details, but not word by word. But I'll give you the gist of it. Your contract is your ability to understand how court proceedings work. And that's one of the first things the county coroner checks. In fact, the county coroner's qualification is not medical. It's lawyer. Is does this man or woman understand what court is? Does they know what a court is? Do they know how to talk to a court? The proof of this is that for a thousand years, they have been informing you of what court proceedings is. That is like a football game, a tennis court, a table tennis court, anything that a game is played on, including boxing and all them, are all referring to the court proceedings. They are identical in every manner. Anybody that is outside of the court has no say because they're not in the game. Okay? That is something that you need to understand. Your television programs, your Olympic games, your boxing games, your tennis ball games, all of these things are constantly teaching you what court proceedings are. So if one of you, for your own sake, decide to look up what the qualifications of the coroner is, you'll find it doesn't, it's not medical. But if it's medical, i.e. they got a, a first aid, you know, certificate, a first aid certificate, that really kind of helps. Okay, but that's it. It's just to check that you know what court proceedings are. In, in the life of men and women, not human beings, in the life of men and women, court proceedings is what enables you to go forward in life. Okay because I need to know what your court proceedings are for me to be able to conduct communications, commas with you. So if I go to Putin's court and I start playing rugby with him, they're going to slap me down real fast, okay? Because that's not the game he's going to play. The game he's going to play is probably par parlay talk, all right, to, uh, to form count, uh, contracts and things. Your contract, your ability to contract, is your ability to control every four corner of a document, which is called all rights. Because every four corner on a piece of paper is what you need to control. At the moment, you only have partial control. That means somebody else is controlling other corners, whereas you may only control a corner of that, full stop. OK, now, everybody understands a court takes place under the four corner rule. Put your thumbs up if you do. OK, so I'm going to ask you a question. OK, and all you have to do is just kind of smile to figure out the answer. If I do not give you where the boundaries of my court is by pointing out where the four corners are, Will you be able to play tennis with me? No. Correct. So if I do not put the boundaries in, put the terms and conditions in, and that I do not have an impartial person looking into that court, I cannot control the game, and it's not a fair game. Okay? Which is what all the fiction courts do to you by making you higher or lower, and you'll find the well of the court even in the Supreme Court, is empty. 
everybody else is sitting on the spectators stadium spectators. the judges are nothing more than spectators they're not even in the court and that they call that foreign immunity that means they are not part of the game and they are claiming pedestrian immunity spectator immunity which was beautifully played out for you when a footballer left the field to punch a spectator and the judge said to him you can't do that you left your court and assaulted uh, a spectator his name was eric cantona yeah but did he said he threw this guy threw a hot cup of coffee over you he said that's that, that's your problem he's got his immunity you have your immunity you get on with it yeah if i shout at you as a spectator if you're stupid enough to follow my instructions as a amateur the problem is yours as a professional okay these are universal laws that exist on our planet i think i have successfully communicated to you what a four corner is the name here is called a surname and i have nom de gear that nom de gear means that i am not speaking for my family and i have made that into a dead entity okay i am not speaking for my mum my father my dog or anybody else i'm speaking for this man here called mark kishan christopher mark christopher full stop and you'll find your passports are written this way too so i'm only speaking about myself and nobody else and this thing here controls everything else called as agent for the artificial person anything artificial man made it comes under a person a personage okay can you switch your mic off please thank you so whatever i create i have infinite ability to create anything that i want and they come under the uh, system of known as agents i cannot live anywhere else except where i am which is in my body and my mind so it's always care of and that's my actual address and i am not i am not great british united kingdom and all this nonsense i am an englishman a dark skinned englishman and i'm an english nation and i am non commercial in this element i will let them know whether i am commercial or not but i am non commercial here i have signified that by putting the postcode completely in lower case which means it's domestic if i put it in upper case it's commercial it's commercial full stop first of all i want you to write to the uh, county coroner and keep a record of what you have sent the name of the county coroner you must not write to anybody else apart from the county coroner the county is what controls the courts and the sheriffs in each county that's why they call it county coroner if you write to the chief coroner that's just an oxymoron because it will say on wikipedia that he is only a ceremonial coroner a ceremonial coroner a ceremonial coroner is the one that sings or uh, sings cries or dances in a funeral on a funeral okay depending upon which culture you're in some cultures celebrate death some cultures mourn death uh, some people you know cry and joke and whatever it is some people joke in a funeral depends what culture you're in always write to the county coroner everything in red is what you need to fill out in and when you do that you write to their private capacity private capacity is what distinguishes public capacity public capacity everything in a public capacity is known as acting anybody in the public is an actor literally your presidents your prime ministers your sheriffs that are all in public office are all actors that control other actors in commerce and they distinguish that by the, the way that they write your names okay that's why they never write to you in your birth name they always write to you in variety of acting names the private capacity takes them out of being an actor okay there are two elements in life private capacity public capacity 
when you put them in the public capacity and only write to them public capacity, they will only write to you as an actor, Shakespearean actor. All courts are speak Shakespearean language. Okay? And if you go to my website, you'll find proof of that. So if you ever write to John, you know, JFK, that's a legal fiction actor. If you write to uh, John Frederick, uh, what's his name? Uh, John F.K. Uh, John, John Fed, I think, Federico or something. But if you write it's to him. Gerald. That's it. In his full birth John name. Gerald Kennedy. Yeah, that's his, that's his birth name. That's the factual name. But if you write to him in JFK, then you're writing to him as an actor and he's just going to ignore you because you're just another actor. Do you understand what I'm saying? That's what that is. That's, those are the distinction. You have uh, in Canada a, gold, a guy called Professor Peter Jordison, I think it is. A uh, very eloquent man. If you look on his Wikipedia, you'll be able to see and how he writes his name in whatever transmission, whether he's acting or actually speaking as a professor or speaking in his private capacity, which he very rarely ever will do. Okay? That's how you know is how they write their name. If they write their name in any other way apart from the name that they were born with in this fashion that I've showed you, then they are only acting. They're part of a legal fiction and they don't need to tell the truth or anything like that. Okay, full stop. I've put here county coroner. You must find out where your county coroner is and write to them. And this is an example of the address. I've put here English nation because this would be particular to me or peculiar to me. But if you're in Canada, you would, Canada is a corporate name. You've got to understand that's a corporate name. So what you would do is you put that all in lowercase and that will take it out of corporate. Okay. So if I was to write this all in lowercase, it would be certain I'm talking about the nation. If I put it in upper and lower case, then it, meant it can be easily confused for being corporate or non-corporate. But I've added the, uh, the suffix nation, and the nation is not a corporate. Nation are made of people, okay? Corporates are made out of individuals, what they call individual rights. Another corporate is also human. Human means the many colors of man. And that comes under colouring of the law, which is a crime to perform against any man or woman. To paraphrase that, we write a constitution out. Somebody rewrites the constitution by saying some animals are more equal than others. Now, that means is that all the other animals will now have to work very hard to prove that they are more equal than each other. Do you understand Orwell's book what he is teaching you oh well is a crown agent they speak to you in code so let me paraphrase we all get together and have a revolution we overthrow the farmer who has intention of harvesting us because all farm animals essentially will be worked to death or killed for food or fur or wool or whatever it is in doing so, we need something to work on, so we create a constitution. That constitution says clearly all animals are equal, period. And then the pigs get greedy, and in the back, they rewrite the constitution, and that's called an amendment. And an amendment requires no other parties involved. It means I'm going to hide it from you. Okay, and then I write an amendment without consulting you, because that's what amendment means. It means no mending. I write the words, all animals are equal, which is what we agreed upon. And the amendment is, but some animals are more equal than others. In doing so, they have now put themselves more equal than any other animals. And they have also put you in an impossible situation, the other animals, which is, you now have to prove that you are more equal than each other. Now war breaks out. Do you understand what I'm saying? They're about to play the same game on you so you don't touch your own corona. And they brought in a lot of professionals to do that, especially in Canada, 
and I don't want to name and shame them because I want to give them an opportunity to correct themselves. This would include, include talk show hosts as well. Very famous one with a J in it, but I don't want to name and shame him because I want to give him an opportunity to not to go the way that Alex Jones did, which is a legal fiction. Okay? And they bought, they bought, you, they bought them in for you to reconstitute and accept the amendments that the government's going to make, which you had nothing to do with. Does everybody here, put your thumbs up, understood the significance and the explanatory reach of what I have just said to you? Okay, thank you very much. It is entirely up to you whether you wish to put a postcode in upper or lower case, entirely up to you. I've tried all mechanism, that's, that's what that is. With the date, you can put it in as any date that you want, as long as it's not futuristic. You can put it from the day that you was born, entirely up to you, but not a day before. Like for example, if today is the 24th, don't go and put you know, the 30th, because then she will start everything on the 30th, the coroner, okay? Full stop. I'm gonna to explain to you what these words mean. Notice to agent is noticed, sorry, notice to agent is noticed to principal, notice to principal is noticed to agent. What that means is that when you want to speak to um, what is known as a agency, all agencies are beneath men and women to provide them essential services, including CIA, FBI, government organizations, and all other officials that write their name on Wikipedia as their legal fiction. You just have to look up what the name of your prime minister is or your county coroner, and it will tell you how to write their name, okay? But you are not writing to the county coroner in legal fiction terms, but by the name that she provides you with to provide that service for you, okay? And that will normally be on some sort of um, Wikipedia, reference library they always must put it in the reference library as well as on wikipedia and on the internet that information will be freely given to you so when you want to speak to an agency these are the words that you put in and that initiates what's known as agency so when i want to give the fbi or the um interpol some instructions about fraudsters and stuff i would put this word in and they will know what to do because I'll give them the instructions, full stop. In conventional language, and this is what this is written in, in conventional language, an affidavit is like a statement of facts or truth, okay? According to your word, your word is your bond, by the way. So all of you would have watched my video, and that is your bond. If you break your bond, then you're in problem. If you write and make claims that don't exist, they will prove that you are an idiot, and they will keep you as the dead. Okay, an affidavit is a, is, a, is a statement of facts or truth of a special appearance. What that means in law is that you are there quite literally on special appearance. So you've come along uninvited on special appearance because you can do that. And you are handing this document in by hand with proof of delivery or through the postal system or both or you can just hire a service processor, which will cost you around about 80 euros to deliver this on your behalf. And they will do that by hand for you, okay? And notice of estoppel. Estoppel uh, is a common law word, but not designated within the common law. It essentially means it's a final stop. Instead of saying final stop, they say estoppel, all right? It's all kind of fiction words, but that's what that is. Okay, full stop. This is what you need to do. Write her name or his name. They mostly tend to be women these days. I don't know why, okay? But uh, they are mostly women. That's that. And they are all lawyers. They are not medically trained. And, you know, I'm able to train people to be a coroner because of my position as a chief federal postal court judge and a planet potential judge but that's not what this is for, okay? 
and I will give you the end conclusions as I'm why I'm doing this for the entire planet later on. So you put her name in there and you always write to her in a private and public capacity because she has both. You're writing to her as a woman and also writing to her as a agent operator. Okay? Full stop. And in her capacity. Capacity means, you know, holder of energy. On a geometric level playing field or a geometric field. What that means is that the reason why I'm under the penalty of perjury all the time is because I'm on a geometric level playing field with everybody. Games are played, court cases are held all on a geometric level playing field. If I do that, then I'm disabling you. Okay? So irrespective of what it is, your claim is a geometric level playing field. Otherwise, what's the point of it? And you now put her under the penalty of perjury, which means to tell the truth. And you are to keep this correspondence in your court of records as retrospective correction, which means from the date that the corruption took place. Okay, because all crimes are retrospectively stopped if you needed to. And uh, you would just simply put your name in here, the non begeared you know, the living man in body, spirit, uh, non-adversity, com uh, non-combatant, non-belligerent, Combatant means uh, you're not in combat. Belligerent means you're not in warfare. Secured party creditor. What that means, secured creditor or creditors, depending upon what you want to use, if it's a plural, and I'll put a stroke there in front, front of that. Okay. If it's two of you, then you would use a plural. If it's not, you know, just do what you need to do. Secured creditor means that you have not surrendered your money, your life, your DNA, your breath, your children, and etc., to custody to the bank, coroner, government, or anything. At the moment, the reason why the courts are running riot over you and the governments and the police is because they are the custodians that you entrusted with them by signing away your all powers of attorney. And for the Irish people, this is to reverse that. So give me a minute. I've been teaching since 10 o'clock, so my throat is getting quite dry now. <laughs> oh, that feels better. So as, as you folks know, I've done quite a lot of, me and Irene have done a few videos on the fact that the government in your Irish country, as well as every country in the world, actually has one of these documents that makes them a holder of your all powers of attorney. All powers of attorney is essentially me signing over my life and all decision making to use or one of you's to run my entire life. You decide whether I live, die, vaccinated or anything else. These documents will reverse that. Okay, and always, you can always write in your sound mind. If you take alcohol, you're not in your sound mind because alcohol is a spirit and that spirit will remove your own spirit and put its own alcoholic spirit inside of you to alter your mind. You must understand this and that's the county coroner's language that they use. They say alcohol is a spirit, which means the spirit of the alcohol is now going to replace yours. And if you want to know the evidence of it, get drunk because you're out of your mind, okay? Non-adverse, non-belligerent, secured creditor, which means you're not giving your credit to anybody else and you're withdrawing it. And that you are under underwriter of. That means the man that controls everything or woman is able to go to the underworld as well as travel under the every plane. There are called planes. And you are now the underwriter. It's also another language of funeral directors. That's why the courts say to you, go and do your undertaking. That means go and speak to your funeral director because you are dead in this court. That's the language of the dead. That's also the language of the county coroner. They have their own dictionary and their own language that they use, full stop. And you are the sole beneficiary of everything that you do on the artificial person, which is normally written like this nom de geared, 
Okay, so you have even the ability to go to the underworld. Uh, these, these stories are not as weird as you think they are. As a planet potentiary judge, as well as the what is known as the 13th of the 13th month, I'm able to travel in all manner of planes. And I have seen and I've done these things. I've talked to government officials and they try to get themselves of the plane. They actually jump on top of boxes and chairs to make sure they are never on the level playing field. So you imagine a politician jumping on his desk so he can't hear me because he's being confronted by a planet potentiary. Yeah, or the judge simply leaving the room because they're confronted by a fact. And I've done these things. This is all first hand knowledge. Okay. Uh, you know, if, if, you, if you witnessed a minute of my life, you would understand the length and breadth of experiences that I have. So when I tell you, you know, when, pol when politicians are confronted by me in the office or whatever, they just simply break the continuation of evidence by jumping on a desk or on their chair or taking their feet away off the uh, floor because they're not allowed to be on a level playing field with a the fact. They have submitted to the underworld in order to lie, cheat. And if they get caught lying on a level playing field, it almost certainly means a death sentence for them, okay? There are severe consequences to this if they break that law. And I've seen it played out time and time again in places that you, you cannot misimagine. Full stop. Affidavit of special appearance, notice of the estoppel of sound body and full power of attorney. So this document takes full power of attorney back from your government and you file it with the county coroner. This uh, particular line is purely, purely uh, optional for you. Uh, but I won't spend too much time on it. When you write like this and put your passport number in, your passport number is all you require to start your own bank. You can become as powerful as the Rothschilds if you know the mechanism, and I ain't teaching it to you. But if you want to make yourself bank banker, which means you are in control of your own banking, you can put your passport number in there, uh, thumbprint it if you want, and that will make you bank banker. If you have a live life claim, which is an incredibly powerful document, you can write in the number here and the live life claim, but take it out of italic if you have it. If you don't have it, it's fine. If you want to buy one, you can go on my website and you do have to pay for it. But by doing this, you don't need a live life claim. But if you want to do it at a later stage under Miller's technology that displays to the entire world who you are and what you are and that you know and can control language. He who controls grammar controls all commercial activity. Okay, that's what David Wayne Miller's technology was about. My Mark, God, this just computer to... To go to... uh, No questions, please. Sorry. So it's entirely optional. If you don't understand this technology, just get rid of it. Okay, but I'm not teaching it to you today. It's only because some of my other students here and they know how to control it. So I thought I'd give them the opportunity to do that. The third uh, sentence is the geometric low playing field, things that you know. This document was for the Americans, okay? So you would just simply correct that for whichever country it is. So in this kind of status, uh, this would be Ireland. Ireland passes statutes, which are artificial, where no general law affecting private rights shall be var varied in any case by special legislation, except for free consent in writing, blah, 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 blah. Okay, this means that you are in full control of what you're doing. Okay, and all derivatives thereof. Any works that I do as a carpenter or as a chef, you know, I like cooking, all that belongs to me, unless I decide to give it away to you guys like this. I'm the chef of this, so I'm giving it away and I'm in control of it. Okay, that's what that is. So I'm in control of all of these things because he who creates things their works are their own and cannot ever be trespassed upon without consent. That's why they go to incredible lengths to write to you and convolute you in any which way they can. 
This is the final element, is that you give them, you can give them three days, or you can give them uh, ten, 10 days. And I'll write it in for you. If you give them ten, three days, perfectly fine. If you give them 10 days, that's perfectly fine. I've tried all of these things and they work. That includes the courts. I give them three days to write back to me and they do. They always do. Okay, but that's me. If I give them 10 days, they do like to take their time. Okay, so for the coroner, three days is enough. If you want to give them 10 days because they're overworked, because they've got so many dead people in their hands, if you know what I mean, okay, uh, full stop. And what this center is basically saying is if she doesn't uh, write back to you, she's accepted it, okay? So she has to rebut it. And we've never had it rebutted. Um, let me rephrase that. With the exception of one case that's got nothing to do with this, which was a mortgage case, they've never rebutted it, okay? Uh, so that's what that is. And we've sent out thousands of these things. I look forward to your correspondence back by postal mail under the penalty of perjury. These sentences are known as self-fulfilling prophecies, which means you're closing off all loops that they cannot try to escape out of. Okay, that's what that is. Here, you would put your autograph, like your first two names, Thumb printed in red, in red or blue. Red or blue is perfectly fine. If you've got witnesses, that's quite good. If you don't have any witnesses, don't worry about it because you can always witness, self-witness. And if you wish to CC in the county recorder, securities and commission, uh, commissions in New York, Experia, Experia which is in Ireland, Transusion International, these are credit agencies, you're essentially withdrawing your use of your credit. So the use of your credit, because they're living on your credit. That stops it from them selling your credit on the open market. These things are incredibly powerful, but I cannot spend like 20, 30 hours educating you on it. But they are sufficient for you to know that all corporations have no energy apart from the energy that you lend them. And you're withdrawing your lending. That's all you're doing. And if you wish to send it to the Financial Conduct Authority, help yourself. Okay. Now, for posting, you decide. If you send it by post, put the serial number here and then autograph it and thumbprint it as you do. Okay. So if it's a sticker, just put the sticker there. If it's American, you have to write the name in sometimes, write in the words, the letters, write it in, thumbprint it, and that will make you the postmaster on this document. Once you have done that, turn the document over and put another uh, postage stamp on it, date it, just a postage stamp, one dollar is okay, one euro is perfectly fine, just date it, autograph it, not signature, autograph. You can see all those things on my website. Thumbprint it, and that's fine. The reason why you're dating it is because postage is normally dated. Okay? And you can date it retrospective if you want. Listen to me very carefully about what I'm about to say to you, because most people are under presumption and assumption. So in order to do that, I'm just going to play a game with... Uh, Let's pick a person here. There's a man there called Mary. I'm not going to speak to him because I'm not convinced he's Mary. So I'll speak to Meryl. Meryl, can you turn your mic on? We're going to play a little game. Can you hear me? I can hear you. We're going to play a game. Go with the narrative, okay? Uh, what I want you to do, Meryl, since we are friends, okay, we've known each other for a little while. Yesterday, I had a car accident. Uh, a brown-colored car hit me in my car, damaged my white car. 
and she's disappeared. Where is she gone? Anyway, let's just still play the game. Okay. Can you can you witness? Can you help me out and be the witness for my insurance saying that, you know, what I'm saying is true? Could you do that for me? Well, only if I were there. You're not going to do that for me, even though we're, we're friends? Well, since I wasn't there, I couldn't be your witness. I'll give you a hundred pounds if you do. Well, sorry. Okay. So what the lady is basically saying is that if she ever witnessed something she's not and does not know, that's she's broken the penalty of perjury. And that's a seven year prison sentence. Okay. So if you're going to use witnesses, make sure that you've known them and they are trustworthy because nobody can witness other people's documents unless you know them. Full stop. Okay. Never use a witness you do not know. Never, never, ever do it. Full stop. Okay. So that is that. I think I've explained everything I need to. So I'm going to put, actually, I'll leave the document open and uh, come back. I'm going to put the document down. Let me just orientate this. Oh, there you go. Ooh. Okay, so uh, that is that. I'll open up the floor for questions. Please do not ask me reactionary questions. Okay, no reactionary questions. And also think about your questions. If you're going to make a statement, tell me, Mark, I want to make a statement. Can you check my statement is accurate? Okay, learn your communication. So if you're going to give me a recipe, thank you very much, but don't ask me about a recipe unless you tell me this is a recipe. If you're going to make a statement, make the statement, but let me know first. A question must uh, uh, sound like a question. Okay, if it's a question, you will hear it clearly. If it's a statement, you've got to qualify it. So I would be quite stringent on this. All right, so I'm now going to open up the floor for questions. Do not compete. If you compete, you will lose. Okay, got, you will lose I've the collective mind. Gilbert Cooper has a question. Are you Gilbert uh, Cooper? Yes, sir. Okay. My, my question is... Uh, I missed the first part about the document. I was in the break room having lunch. I'm trying to look at it over all these guys fumbling on talking. And I missed the first part. Was that something that you brought up or something that I could bring up on a computer? I'll take the next question. I'm sorry, I'm not being rude with you, but I'll take the next question. Mark, the document that you're talking about and have talked about there, will it be available now for us to download? Will you have it there available for us to download? Who, who am I speaking to? Snow here from Derry in Northern Ireland. Yes, on the email I said I'll give you the documents, yes. Thank you. Next question. Uh, Mark, can you hear me? Yep, I can hear you. I can hear you. Okay. Uh, question uh, the, first, the first important question is, I, my married name's Bianca Booth, but my, my birth certificate is Bianca Grzynska. So how would I write any forms? Would I put it as Bianca Grzynska or as my married name? What would you like to do, darling? <laughs> Just make it legitimate so they, they know me as Bianca Grzynska, but my passport's Bianca Booth for the last 10, 15 years. What's your first name? My birth that certificate's Bianca. What's your first name? My first that, name's Bianca. So hold on, darling, let me finish. Let me finish. What is your first name that's got nothing to do with your husband 
or has nothing to do with your father's name or your family name. Oh, okay. Yeah, Katrisa. You've got your answer. Next question. Yeah, Mark. Yeah. This is Willie from Chicago, Illinois. This question is... Yeah, Chicago. I'm speaking to Chicago, so everybody just uh, be quiet, please. Yes, yeah, my, que my question is, Mark, did I hear you correctly? Your signature and your autograph are two different things. Your signature, yes, it is. Your signature is a, is a simulation of your nature. It's an artificial instrument. Your autograph is legible. Signature comes also from the word cursive, which means you're in cursive, which means you are dead. Okay. That's what so, that means. An autograph, if you want to know how to do an autograph, that's on my website. I'll leave you to it. Now, you. You are, since you're in Chicago, I've asked people to find me certain people, the county coroner there, a particular judge, and also uh, a clerk that's on my website. That would really help me 